All right, part three of the three-part series that we've been doing with our buddy Ben down here. We just finished up with the deadlift, all the coaching cues. We just did all the squat and all the coaching cues. Now we're gonna move over into the bench press and all the coaching cues. Pay close attention. He dropped some serious information and knowledge in this next video. Take it away, Ben. So just like in the squat and the deadlift with the bench press, you, probably the most important thing is making sure that you're distributing the weight evenly across the muscle groups that are involved in the movement. Unlike in the squat and deadlift, you're not gonna have a perfectly neutral spine when you're bench pressing. One really important thing when you're benching is to make sure that you're protecting your shoulders. A lot of people end up with shoulder problems or elbow problems or wrist problems on the bench press because they're not positioning their upper back correctly. So you also hear, hear a lot of people talk about how, well, you know, arching your back on the bench is bad for your back. And they're right, kind of. You don't wanna be arching your lower back. That is probably not gonna help you for two reasons. First of all, you're losing all the power that you could be transferring from your feet to the bar. And second of all, you could be putting your back in a compromised position. You wanna be arching your upper back. So your upper back is, you can think of it, your thoracic spine is the term for it. Upper back is, it's not exactly right, but it's close enough. When I'm arching my lower back, it looks like that. My upper back hasn't really moved at all. I'm just arching my lower back, I'm pushing my abs forward. That's not good. I wanna keep that lower back tight, I wanna arch my upper back, my thoracic spine. You'll notice I don't have a lot of mobility there. You won't either. It's not really meant to arch that way too much. You don't have a lot of range of motion in that thoracic spine. It's more of a rotational kind of uh, part of your body. But putting your upper back in that position allows you to also put your shoulders in a better position. So when I arch my upper back, I'm also gonna pull my shoulder blades just a little bit back and down. You don't need to exaggerate this movement. A lot of people, super, super tight. You don't need to do that. You just need to make sure that you're keeping the tension off of kind of the front of your shoulder, right? And you're doing that by keeping the upper back tight, just like we talked about in the squat, exactly like we talked about in the squat. By keeping those muscles tight, you're gonna, again, balance the weight more efficiently, and you're gonna avoid a lot of shoulder injuries. The other thing to think about your shoulders is the degree of external rotation that you're using. So, Again, more or less external rotation, moving your arm away from your body, internal rotation, moving your arm towards your body. You want typically a balance between the two if you're benching without any type of supportive equipment. You'll see some people who do bench using supportive equipment who will talk about, you gotta keep your elbows super, super tight, you gotta keep that full external rotation. And that's true for them because they have a lot of support off the chest. But if you don't use that type of equipment, you need to make sure you're engaging your pecs and it's usually a lot easier to use your pecs, use your chest muscles, if you have some degree of internal rotation. You don't need to keep elbows super tight in, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But as long as you've got that upper back tightness in your bench press, and you're keeping all your other muscles tight, so you're not rocking around on a bench, you're not doing a little fo footsie dance, as long as you're keeping tight and keeping your upper back position, you're probably not gonna injure yourself on the bench as long as you're not going too crazy heavy or doing anything silly like that. So that's the main thing. There's a lot of other variations that we'll talk about as well. So again, hand placement, foot placement, and then breathing, and how, how kind of you descend the bar, how you lower the bar to your chest. All those things are very important, but when it comes to safety, really that shoulder position is gonna be the most important one for most people. The other thing that goes right along with that is kind of your wrist position. You'll see some people bench with a flat wrist. They say, oh, you know, I can use, I can feel a little bit better, I feel stronger that way. And for a lot of people it does because it's gonna shift a little bit of the emphasis away from kind of the shoulder area and towards your triceps. And if you have stronger triceps, that's, that's really good. Unfortunately, you wanna be able to engage everything with your wrist straight because when you bend that wrist, it's also putting a lot of tension on the elbow. And that can lead to elbow problems, it can lead to shoulder problems if you're compensating. And so keeping, that keeping your entire forearm vertical keeping your wrist, elbow stacked, that's very important for safety on the bench press as well. So those are kind of the two things that you need to remember when you before you get set up. Once you get set up, again, there's different ways to go about this. I like to, just like with my squat and deadlift, I like to start from the top down. So I start thinking about my kind of chest, my upper back position, and I'm gonna go all the way down to my feet. So the first thing I'll do is set my upper back on the bench, I'll find my grip, and then I'll make sure I get my big air, right? And this time, you know, in the squat and the deadlift, we're really breathing into the diaphragm. This time I prefer when I'm benching to really breathe into the chest because I wanna make that chest as big as possible. The bigger my chest is, the higher up it is, the less I have to move the bar. So when you have to move the bar all the way down, again, more tension on your shoulders and really you're not gonna see a whole lot of extra benefit in terms of pec development from the extra inch or two range of motion, you're just gonna be able to use less weight. And on the balance, it's usually more helpful to be able to use more weight effectively than to use less weight over just a slightly bit 
more range of motion that could also compromise your shoulders. And then the third thing is to set your lower body and your feet. And this is actually part that a lot, a lot of people struggle with. They'll be moving around a lot. They won't get set first before they unrack the bar. For whatever reason, they won't get in a solid position. And a lot of your power from the bench press comes from your feet. I know it sounds weird, but being able to stay in that tight position, it all starts with your connection to the ground. And so that's very, very important. So I'm going to get back on the bench. We'll take things step by step, kind of figuring out the right position for you. So. Like I mentioned, the first thing I do is set my upper back. And for me, the easiest way to do this is by actually putting my feet up on the bench because that allows me to flatten out that lower back. Remember we talked about how you don't want to be arching your lower back? Feet up on the bench is going to more or less prevent that. So I start here and then I'm going to try to arch my upper back. And I do that by picking myself up and using the bar to push myself down. Just like in the squat where I'm using the bar to pull my lats down, I'm doing the exact same thing in the bench press. So I set my upper back exactly like I would in the squat, pulling down on the bar, and then thinking, once I get my grip, I'm gonna think about pulling the bar apart just like in the bench press. Just like in the squat, excuse me. Now for my grip, I prefer a more balanced grip. So I prefer something that's gonna distribute the load equally across my chest and my triceps. You don't need to distribute the load equally. You need to make sure that you're using your muscles efficiently. So if you have huge arms and super strong triceps and you feel better with a closer grip that's putting more emphasis on your triceps, that's perfectly fine. If you've got really small arms and a small range of motion, you want a super wide grip, that's fine too. As long as it doesn't stress anything, doesn't cause any pain. I think most people are going to be better off with kind of a more moderate grip. And for me, I start out, I put my thumb just a little bit away from the edge of the knurling, right? The knurling is the sharp part of the bar. And that's about the right grip for me. Again, you'll be different based on your leverages. I have fairly long arms, and so my, my moderate grip is a lot wider than a lot of people's. But as long as you're comfortable, probably gonna be the most important thing. Something doesn't feel right, hurting your elbows, hurting your shoulders, play with your grip, adjust your grip until you find something that is comfortable. So, set my upper back, find my grip. From there, deep breath into the chest, and now I have to find my foot position. So for a lot of people, the best foot position is going to be where your heels are directly underneath your hips. Because remember, you're transferring the power from, the, from your feet, from your lower body, to the bar. And so the more stacked you can get, the more you can get those muscle groups aligned, and the better that transfer is gonna be. Some people though, really, 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 really struggle with shooting their butt up in the air when they're bench pressing. And that's because when you do that, you're really shortening the range of motion. And so it's gonna make the lift feel easier, but also usually not safe, gonna put a little bit too much stress on your lower back and you look really silly. And if you compete, it's not legal. So in a competition, your lift won't count if you pick your butt up. That might not matter to y'all, but the other reason should. You wanna keep your butt flat on the bench. And if you really struggle to do that when you're heels are in close to your hips, you might benefit by just moving your feet out a little bit. With your feet in front of your hips like that, it's gonna be very, very difficult to pick your butt up off the bench. You might lose a little bit of strength, a little bit more of the power transfer from your feet, but you won't lose a whole lot. So the whole setup looks like this. Okay. Now when I unrack the bar, just like in the squat, I don't want to have any inefficient movement, right? I don't want to be doing more than I actually have to. You'll see a lot of people get set up to bench press and they'll do half the bar on the rack. First of all, it's going to exhaust you. Second of all, it's going to be very difficult to maintain that tightness you just built in your upper back if you're doing half a rep and in your forward to get out of the rack. Instead, you just want to pull this out of the rack as little as possible, just enough to get over these hooks. And actually, you can think about scraping the bar against the hooks, pulling them against the hooks, and that'll help you to make sure that you're doing it efficiently. You won't be picking it up too much, and it's going to keep your upper back tight. So I'm just barely going to pull the bar out of the rack, and I'm, I'm going to position it so that it's directly over kind of my sternum, right, right the center of my chest. And then as I descend, I'm really thinking just about keeping everything tight, right? So I'm pulling the bar up, pulling the bar apart to keep that upper back tight. I'm really thinking about squeezing my arms as I go down, and I'm thinking about driving my heels in the ground to keep that lower body tight. 
And if I do that, by the time I get to my chest, I built all this power. It's almost like a spring, right? You've coiled up all this energy. And so you're going to be in a very good position to then press up without having to think about it too much. You'll hear a lot of people talk about the bar path, right? Should I press straight up or should I press back? And you'll have a lot of people talk about, well, how fast should I pause off my chest? Should I not? If you do the descent properly, it really won't make a difference. You'll naturally find that correct bar path if you have your elbows in the right position, which we'll talk about, <clears throat> talk about in a second. And you'll be just as strong if you pause on your chest versus if you just touch your chest very quickly and then go back up. You do not want to bounce the bar on your chest. You don't want to just drop it. We talked about this in the squat, how some people can stay tight even if they just drop it. And the bench, you can actually hurt yourself like that, dropping a big heavy weight on your chest. So don't do that. So I'll show you how it all looks, and then we'll talk about a little bit variation, so you can move your grip, how you can move your elbows to shift the emphasis in the exercise. But here's how it looks all put together. So that was just kind of my standard bench press. If I want to shift the emphasis, if I want to put a little bit more emphasis on my triceps, I can move my hands closer together. That's not really going to change anything in how my bench press looks. But if I want to put a little bit more emphasis on my pecs, I can let my shoulders flare out more. Again, this is usually going to put a little bit more stress on your shoulders, and so you have to use it carefully. But that's okay. As long as you make sure that you're not pushing through pain, the more that you internally rotate, the more that you move your elbows in like this and away from your body and your hands towards your body, the more you're gonna be recruiting pec. So if you're very weak off your chest, if you really struggle, you can lock out almost anything, but right off the chest, man, it just feels like you're pressing into a wall. You might wanna play around with a little bit more elbow internal rotation around your elbows, letting your elbows come around out from your body and putting more emphasis on your chest. It shouldn't make any other difference other, just like moving your arms in, shouldn't make any difference in how your bench press looks, but it'll shift the emphasis from one muscle group to another, and depending on your strengths and weaknesses, that might be really helpful. Again, no matter what you do, be careful. Don't push through pain. Pulling in your grip, that might put a little bit more stress in your elbows. Flaring your elbows out, that might put a little bit more stress in your shoulders, so just be cognizant of all those different options. Most important thing is that you're using your muscles effectively in a way that's safe for you over the long term.